he allowed me to he got me doing designing more which was okay it wasn't bad you know but it was still just designing you know rings and things that school badges you know yeah not really anything that was creative you know yeah that was press metal (laughs) products is that it press metal products Yeah, yeah. yeah And so, you, and so that then the plan was uh, at some point the plan was revealed to you about the travel to England, and so you had, as you said, something like eleven months right. to save up, and then I had about eleven months to save the money up, and uh, that was it. Yeah. Paul's parents were not expecting him back no, within the ever. year. They thought they'd Probably. got rid of me forever. That's true. Mm, mm. <laughs> and then I turn up on the doorstep with Joanne. <laughs> well, yeah, of course they heard about that. You know, I was writing to them, I believe. Yeah, because uh-huh. I didn't you never write. wrote. And my mum and dad didn't have a telephone. So it was in those days, you would just write letters. That's the only way you can communicate, you know. So they, they, they were hearing about the exciting adventures via you, Joanne. Uh, through my both. letters. Yeah, through Joanne. I believe I introduced myself <laughs> and uh, started writing, which I continued to do. I... Yeah, you know, maybe every two weeks I wrote to them, let them know exactly what we're doing. And, you know, in later years I would write, well, if, even when we were back there the first uh, two and a half years, you know, I would even say, okay, we're arriving on the Friday, uh, this date. And uh, because his mother did like, if she, you know, she has dinner prepared, you better get there for six on the dot. Yeah. I mean, we were traveling all the time. It's not easy to do that when you're hitchhiking. And, and no. then I send a letter like two weeks before. Timing okay, it exactly to arrive. We will arrive time. at six on the dot for one of your wonderful Basque mm. meals. And we, we, we always did arrive, like we'd work it out. We would get there right on time. It was only one time we arrived and she says, well, I did get a letter, but there was nothing inside. Oh, you so, sent <laughs> I just sent her a stamped envelope. I must have somehow the letter must have fallen out or something. Someone stole it, yeah. But, so, so when uh, in that period from uh, when you started painting and started uh, realized you could earn some money, how did you progress? Uh, you know, artistically, and did uh, did did prices go up did you try different media did uh, what happened in those 10 11 months artistically speaking and and uh, sort of, you know uh, not much in, in the artwork you know it was mainly uh, just working at the job and sketching at the side and anything i did was like i'd even do some copies of playboy magazine things that girls wanted i think your your friends wanted a couple of sketches i'd yeah, do things like yeah. that sell them for peanuts but uh, just basically little things. I wasn't really heavy into it, you know. Well, it was only my father that paid, Bob. No, I yeah, didn't. your dad was... I had a lot only... of sketches in my bedroom. and Well, sure, always asking him to do different things. And my grandmother as well. Uh, yeah. I did she was so interested that, yeah. in art and she did but a little bit of painting. But it was still just like more of a hobby than anything because I was working full-time as yeah. well. So. That was not making a living. It was the last it. year. That was the... I guess it wasn't until 1970 that you actually started to make a living when my father... Oh, I don't uh, know. We were doing it in Spain oh, in 67. Yeah, but you did two sixty-eight. You worked at the club. Well, I had, okay. yeah, in Spain I had three jobs. Yeah. <laughs> Nightclub, <laughs> teaching English, and painting. <laughs> we'll get to that later, but... Yeah, um, but, I mean... And so when you, when you then decided to go across and make the voyage to to the UK you had to again I guess do the train journey across Canada yeah. and you stopped at an art fair or or, or an art expo on the expo. way expo it was an expo expo, expo Montreal expo Montreal 67. 67 that's it what was the idea yeah, that you that were going to really good we had uh, the plan was three days at the Expo 67. Yeah. And at that Expo, you know, I would never, I had never been to an Expo before, but there was, you know, wonderful exhibitions. And it was one exhibition that was outstanding. And it was these statues, the very yeah. sort of skinny. Futuristic, uh, yeah. like aliens. Were they like 20 feet? Oh, yeah, 15, 20 foot high. And they were just uh, standing there. They did look like aliens. They were like aliens, yeah. And the, the funny, the funny thing about that is that 
Yeah, I was amazed at those. And, well, I think we did talk about these statues. And, you know, we didn't think much more about it. We just were impressed. Mm. But later when we got uh, back to Liverpool and the Bass Club, what's it, Madri Madriaga? Madriaga, yeah, the old Madriaga. It was one uh, a member of his family that's the sculptor of yeah. the actual statues that we saw in Montreal. Was related and to you. And then later, I always uh, with these. Not uh, related, but a friend of my father's. Yeah, friend ah. of your father's, and then yeah. it was so in Madriaga's family. That's right. That's incredible. But it was these. Like I used to always say to Paul, you know, okay, you can paint the thing in front of you, but what else? You know, like maybe in your imagination, like what are you thinking, or you know, express yeah. yourself and you know different ways and so it wasn't till he did do some sketches with the subject matter quite similar to that of the statues at the expo yeah well when i first met uh, paul's parents and uh, is you know saying i don't know i must have I, I immediately i said oh you know paul's gifted and he has a lot of talent and my father believes that uh, you know he could be an artist and I always remember your father saying oh my gosh he's met he's crazy and now he's met a girl as crazy as him like <laughs> and his da- and her dad's and, oh, and as her, crazy as her. her yeah that's what he said Aww. oh my gosh yeah not only a, <laughs> oh, a father that's crazy but also <laughs> <laughs> because he just figured which generally actually he, he actually, it's not so easy. He did warm. Living. He did warm up. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Later after, on, I, after I did the Expo '86, yes, he, yeah. he started to. Uh, he wanted uh, sketches. He even, he even took some of my work to work to sell. Yeah. Some of the prints I had done. United on the boat on the way to the UK, and next time we'll find out what happens in the UK and whether all of your carefully laid out okay. plans, Joanne came to fruition or whether maybe they got maybe they got uh, creatively enhanced a bit we shall see voila now we know how these two got together in canada and began to plan their life of art and adventure Listen to the next episode for stories from Paul and Joanne's European tour in the early 20s. Thanks again for listening to this episode of the Yogacho Art Chronicles. This podcast is recorded and edited by me, Ed Hoskin, and produced by Tala Yogacho and myself. Music is by Hoskin and Clark. And please don't forget to share the links to our episodes and blogs with your friends. See you soon.